In this episode, it's all about layer blending modes. Let's check it out. Okay, guys, welcome to this week's episode. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Jose Vega. I'm a concept artist at adamjosevega.com. And in this channel, I'd like to share with you guys my tips and tricks in Photoshop for digital painting. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you three different layer blending modes that I normally use on my paintings. The first one is going to be Multiply, then Lightning, and then Hard Light Layer. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's first start with Multiply. Now, uh, this, this different blending layer options could be used for so many things, right? But I just want to give you guys some, some ideas of what you guys can use it for and how I use them. So let's say you have a simple scene like this. And I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to put it on Multiply. Now, one of the uses that I have for Multiply is to experiment with how the lighting is going to be in my scene or character. So let's just say I want to I have this this basic scene and I'm not really sure and I want to experiment with different lighting scenarios. So I could do that with Multiply, thinking about shadows. So I'm just going to grab a uh, medium tone blue here that I'm going to grab from my scene. Now I'm going to be using my brush 100% here. And I want to experiment with how my lighting is going to be in this scene. Now you're going to see here that it's pretty dark, right? And actually I'm going to change my brush here for my cube brush here. And you're going to see that it's, it's pretty dark and saturated. And that's okay for now. So let's just say my, my light is going to come kind of like from the top right here. It's going to illuminate a little bit of the ground floor here and maybe a little bit of this building here and some down here. So I want to keep it pretty mysterious. But now um, I can, since I made it in a new layer, I can drop down the opacity just a little bit and then not have that so dark. So when I think about my cast shadows, usually I, I do that first. Those are, those are going to be my harder edge shadows and all this is going to be in shadow and let's just say I have like light coming in an angle like this here now these faces are facing away from the light so it's going to be a form shadow and some of these rocks are going to have some cast shadows here like so now this is really rough as you guys can see then I come back here with my eraser and erase some of these some of these shadows that I don't want. And let's just say it goes in an angle like that. It's gonna come down here like this. And all this is gonna be in shadow. Right? So now I can use just a little bit more here. Let's maybe here. Now I can use a soft brush. And now think about how that light is going to dissipate into a distance. So maybe over here is not so hard shadow. Maybe here it's not so hard. Just a little bit softer. Now I can also use my smudge tool and blend a little bit of that hardness on that cast shadow there. Just erasing a little bit here. So I, I want to have some some variation on my edges here on my shadows. I could have um, hard edge shadows and then some soft shadows and, and so on. Something like that. Maybe this could be one option for me to have as my lighting scenario for this for this spot here. As you can see, you can do this fairly quickly. Just have some light hitting this area here. Fairly quick because you, you just want to have a an idea of 
of how the lighting is gonna be. Maybe some light is reaching this rock here on the back. Something like that. Right? And this could be one option. Let's just say you wanna do another option. Now sometimes what I do is I just put everything black or the color that I chose, right? And then now I play against the negatives here. So maybe my light source is not reaching the ground floor, it's reaching all the way up here only. So you see that I have my whole layer filled with that dark blue and I have it multiplied so it's really dark. What I'm going to do is I can put a mask on it, put it here. You're going to see that the mask is all white so I'm going to see everything that is on that layer. And then I'm going to play with my, uh, my darks on my mask to hide some of that some of that um, darkness here. So I'm going to lower the opacity of my layers. So it's not so dark. And then now I can do, I'm going to do the reverse actually. So instead of my shadow being, my light being on the bottom, I'm going to have my light on the top here. Let's get rid of this. Let's have some ambient light hitting some of these spots here. Some bounce light coming around. Maybe my light source is actually hitting some of these stops here. It's not, as you can see, it's not really bright, so what I can do is I'm going to duplicate that layer just so I can have it. Just so I can have a, an extra. And then I'm going to bump a little bit that light here with my dodge tool. Now for example, I'm going to have places like the top of this rock here having some bounce light here. And the same thing with these other rocks here. And it's not that the light is hitting, it's just um, just ambient light that is bouncing off some of the surfaces in the scene into those spots, into those faces that are facing upward. But what I want to be careful is I don't want it to be as bright as my direct light here. So I have to be careful how bright I go with some of those. Something like that, maybe. Put that in an angle there. Actually, let's do this a little bit more. Lower here. What kind of shadow here? So this could be another option we could have as a sliding here. I'm not really too fond of but of, of this option here, but again this is why it's important for for us to experiment what could work and what doesn't work. So this is what I use multiply the most just to play with my lighting and my shadows and see what works best. All right, so let's get into the other mode here. Now I have here another simple render as well, and we're going to be talking about uh, lightning. Now lightning, what I use it for is to separate my my planes of of depth. So for example, I have this scene here, and I have this character in the foreground here, and this area over here that you're going to see on the on the right side, most of the this big place here is pretty far away from my character 
So I want to have that separation between that point and my character. And the way to do that is by adding atmospheric perspective. Now, I'm going to talk a little, a little bit more in depth about atmospheric perspective in another video. But pretty much what I want to do is I want to decrease the contrast of my area as it goes further away from the camera. And in this render, you're going to notice that the darkest parts and the lightest parts of this really far away area are pretty similar to my, to my foreground here. And I, I don't want that. I want to, the, to have that, that contrast to be less so it appears to be further away from, from the camera. And I'm going to do that with the lightning layer here. And I already have some selections made up because uh, it has some... It could, yeah, it has some complications, not complications, but a little bit more complex geometry because of the rocks and all that. And I want to make sure that I, that I do the separation of, of this foreground, middle ground, um, in difference with the background. So I already made some selections like my alphas and, and all this stuff. But the idea here is to use the line layer to do that effect with my contrast. So for example, I have a selection here. Um, actually, this is a see depth render that will help me do that as well you can see here how the values already read as in this part over here is really far away from from my character here and i'm actually going to use that so i'm going to duplicate that render and i'm going to save it just in case so i'm going to put that in liner you can see it really didn't do much right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press ctrl u for my un saturation controls here I'm going to colorize it. Now I'm going to play with the color here and lightness to, you're going to see here that as, as dark as I go, the dark as I go, the more is unifying the darks with the lights here. So if I go pure black, it's just gonna not going to do much, but the lighter I go, you're going to see that the darkest parts are going to become lighter and lighter. And you're going to see that it decreases the contrast in between those objects here. You already can see that it's making some difference there with that background. Now I'm going to do a selection here. I'm going to create a new layer, put it on lining again. Just going to grab a soft brush. I'm going to grab a lighter color here. And I'm just going to paint with that light color. So you're going to see that it's, it's even pushing even more that area to the back. Now with that, I can, I'm not really too worried about color, but I just want to add some color here real quick. So I'm going to go to bright. And like that. So let's do that one more time. So I, I really don't like doing this type of effects in just one pass. Like I like to build up my, my scene little by little. And that kind of helps me to have some control over my piece. Now since I already made a selection here of, of the gradient uh, from background to foreground, I can invert that selection and then I can make my foreground with a multiply layer even darker so that way I make even more of a separation here even more so a quick selection here it's very quick just like that So now you're going to see a little bit better that separation between my foreground and background, middle ground. So if I, don't, if I didn't have that, just put that in a new folder here. If I didn't have that, then it will be something like that. Once with that, then I can separate more those planes and push my, my things back 
even further. All right, so now the last one is going to be hard lights. Let's get into that. Now, with hard lights, I have this scene already, and pretty much I'm, I just want to add my late FX post post effects here, like light glows and, and all that. And that's what I use hard light the most. So let's just say I have, I have this light here that is almost pointing towards the camera, so I'm going to have some flares and stuff. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to create a new layer, put it on hard light. And I want to grab a bluish type of color here. I don't want to go too saturated. I'm going to do a couple passes again. Very light um, with a soft brush and low opacity. And I'm just going to work little by little what that glow is going to look like. So I could, for example, do that in one layer. And then squish that. And then extend that. Have that there. Then do another pass on top. Like that. Now if it's too saturated, I can just bump out the saturation a little bit. I want to go even softer and more subtle. Like this. So I'm erasing some of this. So it's not too much. Then I'm going to go again. Just a little bit. I go do something crazy. Have a little bit of a purplish going around, kind of like a lens flare type of thing. Don't have too much though. I can even grab some of that blue here, the dark blue, and decrease there, or that white, and then have more of that glow into the into the light there. So as you can see I'm using a pretty big brush because I want to take advantage of the softness of the center towards the edge of the brush to kind of have that effect, a soft effect here. Doing a little bit more saturated on the center. Just like that, right? So that's probably too much. And if, it, if you think it's too much, you can go to the levels, make it a little bit darker. And that's too saturated, so I'm going to decrease the saturation a little bit. And there you go. Maybe like a lens flare type of thing. Now you can create some glowy light effects. Right? So that's it about these three. I hope that that helps you guys in some way. And I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, that's it for this week's episode. Thank you very much for coming. I really hope this gives you an idea on how to use these layer blending modes for your advantage in your paintings. Now, if you have any comments or questions about uh, any other layer blending modes that you would like to learn on how to use and, and any other tip or trick on how to use them, make sure you leave that in the comment section below so I can actually address it in future video. And if you like the content, feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and share it with your friends. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming, and I'll see you guys in the next one.